Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I'm a business valuation expert in St. Louis, Missouri, focused on mediation and litigation. During this episode, we will discuss mergers and acquisitions and creating value before the transaction with Stephen White. He's an ESOP valuation expert and transaction advisor in Montclair, New Jersey. But in the meantime, transactions are still happening. And so COVID kind of wreaked havoc in a number of these industries and professions. But the M&A space was not immune, but it was also thriving Mm -hmm. and deals were still getting done. They just may not have been done traditionally how we've done it. But where do you see us kind of currently in this space of mergers and acquisitions? Yeah. So that's an interesting point because, and I'm going to take it back just a moment because something you just said was interesting is that if we go back to the fourth quarter of 2019, the m a space was really thriving. Mm-hmm. Um, and we tend to, we study certain areas as far as different trends. And that's how our business is, is driven in, in that, those particular types of events. We study private equity. In 2019, the fourth quarter 2019, there was an enormous amount of powder that was being raised. And that created a lot of deal flow. Mm-hmm. And if you were raising capital at that point, you probably closed your funds towards the end of the fourth quarter of 2019. And then some lingered into the first quarter of 2020. If you were still raising capital after a year ago today, perhaps, you probably did not close that fund. But it's the ones that did close in the fourth quarter and the first quarter. Those are the ones that were able to sit back, take a look at the landscape, take a look at how the economy was going to rebound, if in fact it was going to rebound, and strategically start positioning themselves in the right way. So the 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 amount of dollars that were placed in the market has surpassed over two billion. And and, and this is encompassing your your mega deals, your large deals, middle market deals, and, and so on. So that's everyone all combined together. If you look at just the middle market, because that's the area that we really focus our attention on, the middle market, all the way up from 3 million up to roughly, say, 75 million of, of, uh, of deal flow. I would say that it broke down into different categories. The first quarter, there were roughly 61 deals, and that was just middle market, which is a lot. That was up probably about. 12, 15% over first quarter and, and, and the fourth quarter, uh, first quarter of 2019. Then the, then the second quarter hits. Now, what's so interesting about the first quarter is that there was already speculation that there was a pandemic going on in the first right. quarter, but yet deals were still going because there was a lot of capital out there to acquire businesses. But then once everything shut down, it shut down the M&A market as well. And that's where people started sitting back and reevaluating certain things that were going, but didn't mean that they stopped because in the second quarter alone, there was roughly about 20 deals, definitely a drop from 61 deals down to 20 deals, but still there was activity. It wasn't until pretty much the middle of the third quarter, I guess, that's when there was a, 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 a thrust of activity that went into the marketplace. And it went from 20 to 55 deals. And that was right around the middle of the third quarter. And of course, in the fourth quarter, it jumped all the way up to 84 deals. Now that just blew out all numbers from historical numbers from 2019 and 2018, as far as the number of deals in the middle market space. That just lets you know that it set up a, a perfect segue into 2021 because people have been sitting on the sideline. They're looking for different opportunities. And to your point, if you go back to 2019, business owners were looking for ways to exit out of the business or looking for opportunities. And that's what I love about M&A. It's two different transactions. You can either merge with a company or you can just acquire a company. Acquiring a company, somebody's thinking of exiting out of the business. And, and so that's where the fourth leg stool of what we do kind of all ties together. We do ESOPs which is your exit strategy. So we help advise clients from that side of it. We deal with family offices in Gibson State. 
We deal with distressed companies, which can be merged with another company. And of course, that ties right into your corporate valuations. So there has been a significant rise as far as deal flow. But the key for, I guess, when you think about for the middle market is where, what industries. Mm-hmm. So the trends that we focus on, you'll look at the top five sectors. And that's from activity as well as size of the actual deal flow. The number one has been in the technology space. And it and it's kind of intuitive. You think about it. Look what we've been doing. Look what we're doing right now. Everything is virtual. Probably two years ago, you and I would have been in a studio sitting down having this conversation over a cup of coffee. But now it's all virtual. Well, a lot of activities going virtual. In fact, a number of people are utilizing technology now to do the entire merger activity virtually. And I think Ernest and Young is the, one of the pioneers leading in that particular way. But you have technology, finance has been leading the way, retail trade, healthcare technology, and um, transportation. So those are the top five industries as far as activity goes. So there's a number of deal flow that's going in that area. But if you look at it from a value standpoint, you have technology service, consumer devices, um, healthcare technology, you have utilities. Those are leading the way from a, a, a um, value side. And the difference between the two, and I get this question often, is how many deals are actually when you see M&A, you, you, you get alert in the idea that these are huge mega deals that are out there. There aren't as many mega deals as there are the middle market deals. There's roughly about 73% of the deals that you see, they're in that space. They're in that middle market space from 200 million down. Just the size of them, it only takes one or two mega deals and, and the numbers get skewed in that particular way. So. The size of the middle market is very small in that particular instance, but there's a lot of activity going out there as far as when is it a great time to exit out of a business and when is a good time to actually converge our businesses together? There's a ton of money sitting there now, but the key is, is that business owners as well as the people that are selling, I mean, the buyers and the sellers need to understand you want this transaction to go through smoothly. You want it to be successful on both sides. You have to understand what that value is of what you're actually buying. And that's where we step in and, and, and really guide our clients and our, our the people that we work with at this point. Well, and I think we all had to take a break during the pandemic to figure out, <clears throat> you know, it's hard to remember back there um, how confusing it was and how mm-hmm. distressing it was and that we were all trying to figure out, okay, where is the world going to go, not only from a financial standpoint, but a mental health and healthcare and all of this. But what continued to happen is there were many businesses that were successful and thrived. There were some that maybe faltered a little bit. And then you had a bunch of people with money that were Mm -hmm. looking for either a deal maybe a faltered company, right? And say, okay, well, we could snatch them up for a little bit cheaper. Or what are the companies that have been successful during the pandemic? And should we start investing in that area? 